Um, so, um, I'd like to welcome everybody to the 2nd meeting of the Connecticut state um, Senate. Um, I do see a hand up. Uh, I would, uh, Al, do you want to mention something? I was going to ask the president to welcome us, but if you'd like to go ahead. No, I, I would just like to add, um, I, I have 3 items I would like to add to the agenda. So when appropriate, Mike. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, president, Maduka, we always like to you to, to, to welcome us and give us an update. I know you've been very busy. So. Oh, we're uh, still can't hear you, sir. Up now, yes. yes, yes, thank God. Okay, so for starters, uh, good afternoon and happy Friday, or I hope it's happy Friday for all of you. Um, good to see you all. Um, as we as this becomes more formalized, um, I fully support uh, the executive committee kind of kicking off the meeting, and then I just request maybe a segment that allows me to provide a president's report. So, again, this is not my um, you know, this is not my Senate. This is the Senate for the institution. I want to make sure I respect um, its elected elite leaders. Um, with that said, just real quickly, um, I wanted to kind of speak to um, my recap of the Appropriations Committee um, sessions um, that we had last week, even though it feels like two weeks ago. Um, I was extremely pleased by the participation of our faculty, um, of our union leaders, uh, I believe um, professors, uh, Freeman and Sasanka really knocked it out of the park um, as, re as it related to um, their advocacy for increasing our funding in so many different ways. Uh, the testimony of our faculty was really compelling. Um, you can tell our faculty really sacrificed everything for the, for the betterment of our students. And then last but not least, uh, the testimony of the community college students across the state was just um, something that was remarkable, right? It, it was beyond simply we deserve this funding. It was all about their respective why. It was the the impact that their faculty and staff play in their respective lives. It was the fact that our mission of being an open enrollment, we're not judging our students based on what they look like, where they come from, their lived experiences, and how you know our programming, our presence really establishes a sense of hope. Um, an opportunity for all of them. I really felt that it it really resonated um, with the members of the appro appropriation committee. Yes, there were other institutions um, that evening, um, from the privates to to the Yukon, uh, et cetera. But I, I really thought that our students, like their story, um, really aligned with the story of the residents of Connecticut. So I really just want to kind of thank. Um, those of you that encouraged our students to participate, uh, participate, those of our colleagues um, from the faculty ranking, staff ranking, and and uh, union rankings that really lent their voice, you know, to our cause, just made me proud um, to be a part of what we're trying to do here. Um, next enrollment, um, uh, Ms. Tamika Davis, who's our interim vice president of enrollment management, um, she's finalizing uh, the enrollment report uh, to be decimate, uh, decimated. Uh, disseminated across uh, the state to really kind of break down um, where we landed uh, upon census, um, the breakdown by various areas from from demographic to programs to each individual campus, and also an executive summary. It, it's something I'm really uh, working with our administrators is that they have to provide an executive summary, right? That, that gives more insight on what we're looking at. Right, you know, a graph with numbers is great, but what does that mean for us um, in terms of our overall health um, as 12 institutions and ultimately as, as CT State? Um, some of the highlights that will stand out in that report is one, we're up in enrollment. So year over year, um, we're up at least 3% in enrollment. Um, I, think, I think it's really significant as each of us and us collectively uh, communicate externally, internally, internally is that we've stopped the bleeding. You know, the one thing that I fundamentally disagree with, um, have it be it's our elected officials or people in the public, is that they're comparing our enrollment today compared to the enrollment of 10 years ago. And I just think that's an error, right? I, th I think higher ed as a sector nationally 
We can't look in enrollment 10 years ago because that, there are a different set of variables, right? Enrollment from 10, 11, 12 years ago stemmed from the Great Recession, where there was just like an explosion of enrollment in higher education, but it was inflated. Like it, like it wasn't gonna last. And the mistake higher ed made was we built, we, we grew our physical footprint, we, did, we invested in crazy things. And I think we're still paying for that. For me, I look at the beginning of uh, you know, March of 2020, which is etched, etched in our brains forever, the beginning of the global pandemic, right? And really comparing where we were then and now moving forward. But from a year to year perspective, so spring of uh, last year to now, we're up 3%. Um, specifically, um, in terms of the underserved and disenfranchised students or underrepresented students that we all care about, and we're doing our best to close their their equity and achievement opportunities gap, we're up in Black male students. We're up in Hispanic Latinx students, male students. We're up in Black female students. We're up in um, Latinx female students, right? So there's a significant um, growth in there. I think Black male students are up by 11% year over year, right? Uh, Latinx male students are up by 8% year over year, right? These are gains. And these are due to the work, the tireless work of our faculty, of our staff, of our administrators um, across the board, right? That people are feeling more apt to return to college, right? And we continue to see surges in returning students who stopped out and, and now they're here. Um, part of it's due to PAC, part of it will always be due to our affordability. Um, but I think ultimately we have very inviting campuses, we have inviting programs, we have faculty who identify with our students, faculty who come from our communities, um, staff that are here to support and to meet our students in whatever which way, have it be 50% of the way or 80% of the way, right? For the betterment of those students and ultimately their postgraduate success. So again, really pr um, pleased with those numbers. Um, we're not done, we need to continue to grow, we need to continue to increase enrollment and I believe we're on a path forward to do so. Um, and then lastly, um, you know, we can discuss this at some point during today's meeting. Um, but I, I think the, the Senate um, is a significant mechanism and platform for the entire college, right? And there's an opportunity, hopefully, by our um, executive committee and those leaders that will be identified to really establish standing committees, right, that are, that are statewide so that when faculty and staff and everyone in between are asking the questions, where are we with enrollment? What does the strategy look like? Where are we with marketing? What's going on here? What about that? These standing committees serve as a tool for our employees to serve on, right, to scrutinize CT state, to scrutinize the numbers, to scrutinize the strategy, right? If, if we're going to, if I'm going to lift up and establish a, an environment of transparency, we need, to, we need our people to be blunt and speak like they do when I meet with them, but also serve hopefully in these statewide committees. So that is my recommendation. That is not my directive, but hopefully uh, similar mechanisms can be created to really help um, give a bigger voice. Um, to our colleagues um, across our campuses to ensure that the administration of college is not only heading in the right direction, but the right questions, the right recommendations, the, the right ideas um, are being pr promoted and supported. So that's it for me, but uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm, I'm here to answer that. Thank you. Any questions for President Maduka? Thoughts? Okay. I have a, I have a question very quickly. Uh, this is Angelo. Uh, what do you guys think is due uh, the um, higher enrollments? What what what's causing it? Yeah, I, you know that's a great question. I think we're gonna have we, we need months of of um, analysis of that. And obviously, these students are here, so we have an opportunity to engage with the new ones, engage with the returning ones. But I think it's it's a multitude of factors. I think one, we do have the PAC program. Um, this academic year alone, 12,000 students have benefited from PACT, right? In addition, we ran out of PACT dollars, right? So we've, we've, you know, we've exhausted those funds, right? So I think it's been a, a game changer um, uh, in terms of increasing the accessibility and affordability uh, for community college. Um, I think, too, I think we do a really great job both internally and in partnership externally with community-based organizations of really addressing student need. 
right? So yes, we have food pantries. Yes, we have mental health supports. Yes, we have our, our faculty and staff who are really personable in terms of seeing the student for who they are, um, doing their best to understand their lived experiences and trying to connect those students with the resource. And I think, I think that is a skill set of ours. So when we see an insecurity um, tied to housing, tied to childcare, tied to food, tied to something else, I think we do everything we can all day, every day for those students, where it makes going to college um, realistic, right? And doable, right? Because it's never been about aptitude for our students. Our students are not less than in the four-year institution students. Our students have life that they have to deal with. So I think there's there's that. And ultimately, I think it, there's just these external pressures of there are more jobs and people looking for jobs. Um, I think in terms of the living standards in the state of Connecticut, right? It's difficult to live in Connecticut in terms of just housing, affordable housing, or even available housing and everything else. I think people are moving back and being more welcoming to the idea of higher education as it relates to them upskilling, reskilling, um, getting a credential or a degree to get a better paying job so they can take care of um, the livelihood of their loved ones um, and beyond. Uh, I think additionally, I think community colleges just due to our, um, our, 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 our everyday characteristics of like, we're affordable, right? So 10 grand, give or take, beyond scholarship, Pell, everything else to get a two year degree versus this other institutions in the state that I will not mention that it's $70,000 a year, right? Like that, that is a house that's braces, that's healthcare, that's everything else. I still think in this state where there's huge economic disparities, I still believe we're the best bet. Uh, and I'm sure there are other things in terms of recruitment strategies and our partnerships internally and externally. But I think it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, a litany of things that we're doing and we'll continue to do to really promote and encourage people not only to um, enroll with us, but really see the return of investment and the value proposi proposition that we offer that. I think if I might add to your list, I, I think uh, also an important component is uh, our programs merging into one. I think a lot of students in the past uh, were kind of undecided. Or I'm not sure about you know what I'm supposed to do if I'm a Manchester or a Middlesex, and and, and the requirements changed and all that. And now it seems like. Putting everything in a standardized kind of box in a way or format, if you will, simplifies things for students and maybe it's more cost effective for the students and maybe it also is helping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I also want to add and, and kudos to our enrollment management and admissions and registrations team. We had a legislative session at Capital Community College earlier in the week. And one of the elected officials who is a, an alumni of Manchester Community College, but took courses at a handful of other community colleges, specifically Capital and Tunks's um, and possibly Naugatuck Valley. Um, she had recently wanted to retrieve her transcripts because she's pursuing grad school and she really um, raved at how simple it was versus five years ago, it was literally reaching out to five right. individual institutions, trying to remember your password, your, your, your student ID, and it was just, it was one portal, it was one process, and then boom, she had access to it. So again, I think we're, we're doing things to make it easier for, for the residents of Connecticut and beyond and, and ultimately our students. Thank you. Hey, thank you, any other questions? Just want to give a shout out to our GPAs. They've been very, very helpful, very helpful in talking to the students and sponsoring them and making sure that, you know, some TLC. The guy the pathways advisors. Yep. We have a few folks. I know Brian Coutinas, Dr. Coutinas is on the call and he's, he's one of our regional leads. So you can pass that feedback on. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so just to give an overview of, of the meeting today. Um, and welcome. We, we may have some a few new members, and we'll we'll do introductions in a minute. Um, but welcome everybody. Um, the, here is the agenda that I sent out, and I know that we have um, we may have some changes to that, and that's fine. Uh, we just did a welcome. Uh, we do need to uh, adopt or amend our agenda, and one item is we will be looking for a scribe if someone would be willing to volunteer to take some notes. Um, I will remind folks that we do record the meeting for those who can't make it. 
and that also generates a transcript. So we have a very detailed record of the meeting. However, um, it's helpful to have um, a secretary or a scribe to uh, to keep notes of the business items. Um, I thought we could introduce members, uh, review last week's just charge and kickoff or last month's charge and kickoff meeting real quickly. And then we had some updates from our subcommittee that recommended um, starting with a, a temporary presiding officer. Um, they have some suggestions on the structure for executive council, potential elections for the executive council. Um, I did include an update in the agenda. Um, I attached below uh, their update that was emailed out to, to everybody. And then we do have some business items, some policy proposal recommendations, which uh, AVP Fest can present. Um, I do know a uh, couple, couple items logistically. One, we have someone who um, is call, and calling in on the phone. I don't know if that is um, a just for sound or if that's someone who's just on the phone. I have a calling user one, a number number one and two. If you if you wouldn't mind just unmuting and identifying, so we we have a record that you are here and attending. Anybody just accessing through the phone? It's fine to do. We just want to make sure we know who we are. And user two, I know you don't know. Sandra your... Vitali oh, over the Sandra, phone. Sandra Vitali, great. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. Yep. Okay. And then we had, um, I saw L put in the discussion um, some some items for uh, discussion. Quartz caps release for Connecticut State in a new survey main campus versus satellites. Uh, L, do you have a recommendation on where you'd like like those to go? They can go at at the end. We we don't have new business and old business yet, Mike. So at the end, right. at the end of the existing agenda is fine. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So I, I did add that to my agenda. I think I stopped stopped sharing. Um, do we have anyone who would be willing to be ascribed today? Like take some notes again. You don't have to do a transcription word for word. Just capture some major items. We always have a backup of a full transcription. Any brave soul willing to step up? Mike, I think once we have that discussion about course release and responsibilities, hopefully that'll change a little bit. <laughs> All right. Uh, it looks like I could, Ariel Robinson from yeah. Capital is willing to do that. Oh, and Ariel that. today. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ariel. I can work with you and, and get you the transcript and, and the video. We always post that to the SharePoint as well. So thank you again. Don't feel like you have to um you know capture every word of the lecture, but as they say, like in class, you know, we do have a record. So thank you. Um and Peter, I do see that you you're on the call, Peter Bennett. So thank you for clarifying. Okay, do we have any new members who, who have joined us? We'd just like to introduce yourself. I think Ariel's new, right? Uh, well, I, I'm not new, new, uh, but uh, I missed the first meeting. So today is my first, the first time uh, uh, I'm attending this meeting. But the only reason why I missed the first one was because I was um, at the uh, languages meeting. It was actually happening at the same time. So I had to choose one or the other. But I'm Angelo Glaviano for Languages, Middlesex Community College. Thank you, Angelo. We do have the video and the direction script posted in SharePoint. We can always help you get find that if, if needed, but welcome. Yep, as I said, Fridays are getting busy around here, so yeah. Okay, any other folks who may, may have had to miss the first meeting or who are joining us for the first time? Yeah, uh, good, um, good afternoon, Ariel, everyone. My name is Ariel Robinson, uh, fairly new here. This is probably my third month in in my position. I currently um, am the Title V coordinator for Capital. Thank you for everything. Great, welcome. And especially thank you for agreeing to, to scribe a little bit today. Thanks. Okay, so last month, just a quick review. We don't have old business, new business, and we don't have formal minutes from last month's meeting because it was really a charge kickoff. Just to remind folks to kind of reset the stage. Uh, we did have President Maduco um, welcome us and, and formally charge us and, and kind of define our role. Um, 
Um, and uh, we went through introductions of all of our members. Uh, we talked a little bit about a charter um, or bylaws, and we were able to establish a subcommittee. Um, we kind of worked through some guiding principles on that, but then we established a subcommittee. And I know that they've done lots of work because um, I posted the original document and I get a notification every time there's a comment. Uh, and there are lots and lots of comments. So I want to thank everybody who was on that subcommittee. And I know they're going to report out that they've done a lot of work in between meetings. Um, and I think that was pretty much everything we covered. We did a SharePoint demonstration. Um, so the, the overview is in the folder on SharePoint, but again, for new folks, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to Dean Justin Moore. We can help you find those, those resources for you. Uh, yes, hand up. Uh, let's see. Bye. Michael, I just want to say Jennifer raised her physical hand. I don't know if she is a newcomer to the group, but I want to make sure that she is able to voice whether it's her introduction or um, if she had a question. Thank you. Yep. Is that it? Hi. I'm yeah. Jennifer. Um, I'm, I am brand new. I was just elected into this, um, I think it was Tuesday. Um, so, hi, I'm Jennifer. I'm from Manchester Community College. I'm a guide pathways advisor one. Great. Welcome, Jennifer. Glad you got the meeting invite. I know we there were signals crossed, so glad you're here. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody else who, who I may have missed in, unintentionally? No? Okay. So um, the next item then um, the um, subcommittee. Um, I don't know if you have someone who you've chosen to report out, but you did recommend starting the meeting um, with a motion to elect a temporary presiding officer. Again, I'm here as a facilitator. I'm not your presiding officer, uh, but to, to and a temporary secretary to run the meeting until executive council elections are complete. Um, and below in the in the agenda, um, for those of you uh, who, and I can call this up larger, there was an updated email that was sent out um, on the 16th that talked about the proposal of an executive council, um, the roles and the authority. So, does someone wish to make a motion to elect a temporary presiding officer? Mike, it's Nicola, if I may. Um, I, I volunteered to present and to start this, um, but just full disclosure, I'm having my kitchen redone and my plumber is here right now making ridiculous amounts of noise. Okay. So, I don't know if um, someone else from the committee would be willing to volunteer to run the meeting. If not, I, I can still do it. I just, there may be moments where I have to mute myself because it'll just be crazy loud. Uh, Alan has his hand up. Yep. Uh, I move that we uh, elect a uh, temporary presiding officer. Okay. I second that. It's Nicola. Okay. I'm, I'm no parliamentarian. I know we have folks on here who are better. Do we do we vote to elect and then we have a nomination? Do we not take a nomination? We can allow, a, allow a discussion. Discussion yeah, first. If there is no discussion, then we can vote. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. So I believe we vote on the motion and then we can vote on nominees. That proper procedure. Okay. Just don't don't want to miss. Uh, Sarah Siegel, I just saw I had a hand up. Sarah? Nope. I was um that was me just uh voting early. Sorry. Okay. All right. So the motion is to elect a presiding officer. Um are we also electing a secretary? I just see the original uh Alan, that was not your motion. However, the agenda item was to elect both. Do you wish to modify your motion? Uh, sure. So I I would like to amend my motion that we elect both a presiding officer and a um, temporary secretary. Okay, great. So all those in favor of having an election, you can signify aye by raising your hand in the chat, please.
Okay, by a quick count in verbal, uh, I see a clear majority. Um, you can lower your hands. I counted so 27 in favor. I'm sorry. Like 27. 20, thank you. Thank you. You count faster than I do. I would appreciate it. Yep. So that, it, that is the majority. We have 38 participants. However, we do have some guests today. Um, so, um, it, so that would be clear majority. So now do we have nominations for our presiding officer? I see. Let's see. What is their hands up? I nominate Nicola Ricker. <laughs> Even with the noise in the background. I second that. Second that. Second that. Okay. Do we have any other nominations? Alan has his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Alan. Uh, Bonnie has her hand up. Hey, Bonnie. Bonnie. No, Miguel. Yeah, since we're doing a double election, I nominate Ariel Robinson for the um, secretary, the temporary secretary. Temporary secretary for today's meeting. He's already grabbed the reins of the role. Very good. Okay. Do we have any other nominations for a temporary secretary? I can second that. Roberta. Thank you. Is that Roberta? Thank you, Roberta. Yes, it was. Okay. Any other nominations? Okay, so if we're voting for Nicola for presiding officer and Ariel for uh, temporary secretary, um, all those in favor of these two nominations can signify by raising your hand in the chat. I'm seeing a clear majority. Maybe Alan is 29. 29. Thank you. So congratulations um, to both. And having helped facilitate the curriculum Congress meeting all morning, I welcome the help, Nicola, even with any distractions uh, by your by your plumber in your background. Yeah. Congratulations on the kitchen work. It's good that you're choosing rather than uh, hopefully rather than have to do it. But. Well, yeah, no, it was it was definitely a had to. We've done a lot of the work ourselves and the plumbers on his last day, but it's definitely a lot of banging and noise. So I do apologize no if problem. it gets loud. I will mute myself until it's over. Um, and I do apologize if it takes us a little longer to get through um, the agenda for the day. So, Mike, if it's possible, would you please share sure. the agenda for me so I can just yeah. actually, I think I might, I have it up right here. So, I'm happy, um, happy to share anything at any point. So, could you actually, if you would please share the um, a, uh, executive council structure that was put forth by the committee, please? Yeah, right here. Um, so, all of you should have received. Um, except for maybe some of the newer members that just started or um, were just elected, the email from Mike that was sent from the committee, the subcommittee that is working on the language of our charter and the bylaws. And through many discussions or quite a few discussions, there were three proposed structures that were put forth and by voting, this was the structure that carried the most votes or received the most votes. Um, and we have proposed that there is a president of the Connecticut State Senate that is staff or faculty, a vice president from faculty, a vice president from staff, a secretary that is either staff or faculty, and then a student liaison, liaison that is elected by the students that are serving on the Senate. Um, I think that to be fully transparent, the function or the authority of the executive council is to set the agenda. Um, and basically we anticipate many agenda items coming forth that will need to be kind of prioritized or triaged to ensure that the Items that come up are the most pertinent or most important for that particular month's meeting um, and put in order that is decided upon by the executive council. Um, we are also hoping that 
to get clarity from President Maduko today if we are going to be able to have members of the Executive Council sitting at the President meetings. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get some clarity on that either today or next month's meeting. Uh, um, do are there any questions? So this is the structure and implementing the, and, the, and then this is the authority, which is proposed, correct? Yes, okay. this is what is proposed. Okay. Al, Alan, I think I see your hand. They do go up in order, correct? They do. There were about four or five hands up. I don't know if those were legacy hands from the vote. Um, so, I see Peter Bennett, and then, Peter Baster, um, Paul Collette, but these hands are rapidly dropping. So I'm not sure. Yes. Looks like Alan might be a new hand. Yes, Alan. Thanks. Hi, Nicola. Um, Hi, Alan. So uh, I know in the the original proposal um, there were two co-chairs. Um, mm -hmm. Each with a th three credit release or the equivalent yes. in terms of AR. Yes. Uh, did you did you hash out now? You're expanding this to four people. Um, how those credits were? The, or are you are you going to be asking for additional release time? We from, are looking to from Connecticut State, or or how yes. will that work? We are looking to get additional re three credit release. For the president, vice and two vice presidents, and the secretary. So yes, we are searching for an additional three credit release from what was originally proposed. Um, we know that there are still ongoing discussions on how staff is going to be, um, how they're going to be compensated, or the process allowing them for release time to do this work. This is a, a substantial amount of work, um, and I think that should be. Realized by our staff co patriots. And I, uh, from what I understand, the vote was pretty close. So I guess I'd like to understand what is the rationale for having a president and two vice presidents as opposed to just two co chairs, uh, one staff, and one faculty? Um, to be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure. Um, the what ended up happening was initially a different the the co chair structure had initially got the most votes, um, and then there were two members of the subcommittee that were unable to be present and were able to vote in absentia, um, and that carried this executive this four five person executive council. Um, exactly why the people voted for this particular proposal over the co chairs. I'm not 100% sure um, if anyone that is on that subcommittee can remember or has more information, I would welcome their input. Uh, L. Thank you. Um, I, I was actually raising my hand related to the 3 credit release that I had added to the agenda and thought that perhaps um, having that discussion might help um encourage folks to serve but i can speak to having an executive council i did a significant amount of research related to similarly sized institutions and found that this was the most common uh executive leadership council in new england uh, it provided for an individual to advocate for both faculty and staff and having the student liaison specifically elected by the students uh, was also recommended uh, and appreciated um, when I read about through the minutes of how the meetings functioned. But as to the council, uh, the suggestion that the thing that that held concern is when you have co-chairs there is always have you always have to divvy up responsibilities whether it's for a meeting or who is doing what work and this structure provides for a clear delineation of responsibilities but it simultaneously does not put an individual or two people in a place of having to make significant decisions for the body. Instead, it provides a small group discussion to ensure that Senate is informed 
and relevant and moving forward as cohesively as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Miguel? Yeah, so just to, to chime in a little bit, um, as, as Nicholas said, the, there were basically two, two schools of thought. Um, you know, this is a model which, as Al said, is used, uh, is successful and, and can be. Um, I, I was I was on the opposite side of this on the or I should say opposite. Side, there were three arguments, but or three sides. But um, I was looking at the, the 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 two co presidents, and for me, the big concern that I had was there are thirty seven chairs of shared governance for Connecticut State Community College, and using this model, it's entirely possible that um, if a faculty member is elected as the president of the Senate, not a single staff member will be in charge of any committee in the entire thing. So to me, I like the fact that there's a designated staff person as a co-president because then you have at least one clarion voice representing staff. Um, having said that, you know, L is correct in that the president would be charged with representing both faculty and staff and the vice you have a vice president in charge of staff. So it, it's it's a it's a it's a you know it's a battle of competing models. I think they can both be effective. It's a, it's a matter of what does this group feel can be the most effective um, model for us. And, you know, we can certainly approve something and down the road, if it doesn't work, we can always tweak it. Well, I did see a hand, um, Asantua. Oh, I miss you, yeah. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. No, it's fine, thank you. Um, a couple of questions. Um, I do like the language of co-chairs, um, one staff, one faculty, then you'll have um, a staff member who is in a, a position to be a chair of a committee. But two questions, is there a time frame in terms of how long you serve as chair or president? Um, and then what is the strategy in terms of who succeed, succeeds the president afterwards, you know? Um, oh. Great question. Um, as of right now, the term limits have not been ironed out. Um, the subcommittee has been able to get through about maybe a third halfway through the document thus far. Um, there right now, the, the way that the charter is currently written, it is one year terms um, and you would be elected the, um, the, as the new people after the elections have happened for all of the senators, then the elections would occur after all of the new senators are present at the last meeting of the of the academic year so that those that are being represented um, or who are serving on Senate have a voice in who their leader is. Um, there are at this point, I think someone has proposed 2 year terms, um, but it has not been ironed out. So, either a 1 year term or 2 year term and. I don't think that there is a secession policy. I just think that, you know, if somebody was vice president and they decided the following year they wanted to step down or they wanted to be secretary or if the secretary wanted to be president, that is fully um, as of right now, it's keep, some, you know, something that can happen. Okay, I have, I have another question. So sure. I think the co-chair model is good because you can have one staff, one faculty, you can have a two year term and alternate years in which that member is elected. So that um, there's continuity, but then also, uh, you know, each year the new members have a voice in selecting at least one of the chairs. Um, yeah. I don't know if you're open to any suggestions in changing the, the setup or. No, we are. Um, the subcommittee is always welcoming members. If you would love to step in or send us an email to the subcommittee, um, anything that is discussed at the subcommittee and voted on is brought back to this body for a larger discussion. Um, as you know, this body is pretty big. It's going to be very difficult to try to get through me many of the things that we are discussing, but I think it's imperative that it is brought back to this body so that the, de the decisions aren't happening in a vacuum with a very small subcommittee. So anyone who is welcome or is interested in serving or being part of the subcommittee, we welcome any input and new members. So at this point, I, is there any Alan? Go ahead. Well, just just for clarification, but I mean, we're basically our, one of our goals for this meeting is to decide on the the executive structure, right? So 
if if we decide if a, if a majority decide that they would like a different model, we have that option at this meeting. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. That is that was the plan. Is that this was the model that was decided on, that you see in front of you, that was decided on by the subcommittee. But we also realized that that may not be what the larger body wants. So we wanted to make sure that that option was always there for this body to decide. Um, if it is decided that this model is not what this body wants and they would prefer a co-chair model, that can happen. And then we would look for people to self-nominate themselves for those co-chair positions today um, and have one minute to speak to their candidacy and then be able to make that have the elections today. The goal of the subcommittee is to have elections for the executive council, whatever that composition is today, so that the Senate is able to run the meetings. So poor Mike's not running multiple meetings every day. Thank you, Nicola. I, I, I don't know if I have the ability as a host to raise my hand. I have to look at that, but I just wanted to say, I, I updated the document here. Um, originally, we had budgeted and planned for six credits of release or two co-chairs. Um, I don't know if your group had defined, I think Alan asked this and I apologize if I missed it. Um, were you looking for three credits of release for all of the positions? Was it? Yes. yes. Three for everything. Yes. Three for everything. Three, yep. Three for everything on the executive council and the co-chairs would be three credits each. We were also looking with the three, with the co-chair model, it was two co-chairs, a secretary and the student liaison, the secretary in the co-chair model would also get a three credit release. So you're looking at anywhere from 12 to nine credits total. Either so, model. So the other model is, I'm sorry, two co-chairs. Yep. And then no vice presidents or vice chairs. Um, I don't believe so. Miguel, am I correct in that? Yes, you are. Yes. yes. But a secretary, so, correct? Co co presidents and a secretary. Okay. That's what I thought. Three credits each. So in, terms of the, in terms of the credits, Mike, it would be an additional six, uh, six, um, sorry, an additional four credits would be required above and beyond the credit that you receive for serving for the two co president, one secretary model, and an additional six credits um, for the uh, president, two VPs, secretary model. Um, I, I did, I'm just going to throw it. I did receive a question. Um, has there been any discussion regarding um, compensation for the student um, and how, what, what that might look like? And I thought that was a really interesting question. So I'm going to throw it out for discussion. Yeah, that was never a discussion of the subcommittee. Um, so I guess I would welcome if anyone, I do see that there are some hands up. So I will call on you, Kristen and Roberta, just. Is there anyone who wants to speak to compensation for the students? Thank you. That was my my question of concern. Could they get perhaps tuition release or you know money for books, some kind of support? Um, because it's going to require a lot of work and time for them. And oftentimes our most valued student leaders, as a former activities director, I can say our most valued student leaders are the most stretched and the most put at risk because they are so involved on our campuses and we do not want to ever you know see the work that we're asking them to do to support our governance structure to hinder their academics in any way um if i may play devil's advocate really quickly and this is me playing devil's advocate this is not my position one of the things that are being discussed within the subcommittee is the ability to remove a senator for non-attendance non-participate non-participate I have braces, I can't talk, for basically not coming to meetings. If we're going to, do we want to, or should we be able to hold students to the same, the same expectations? Anyone? I, oh, I, this is Angela, I, I think so. Okay, Angela, <coughs> Alan? Um, yeah, I'm, I probably would not support the idea of, of, of being able to remove a senator except for um, like criminal behavior, something like that. Um, I think that that's the responsibility of the, the sponsoring campus if they want to be represented or not. 
and it shouldn't be uh, everyone else's job to decide that. And so therefore, I also would not want to see a student uh, removed. Got you. Um, and then, uh, Kirsten, I see your hands up and then Roberta, I'll call on you next. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not hearing you at least. All right, I'm on mute. Sorry, thank you. Um, so my hand was up regarding the structure of the executive council. Um, I do like what was proposed here for the president, vice president, uh, having each a faculty and staff member, secretary being either or, and a student liaison. Um, my question that I have about that is, and I know it was mentioned a little bit about term limits, um, but more importantly, if anybody, if there's any talk about staggering the, um, the roles so that the whole board just doesn't go away after the term and then a new whole new body is elected. Um, I would be interested in, in, in that model additionally <laughs> in terms of this structure. Thank you. So you're welcome. Um, that has not been discussed. I think one of the things um, we could definitely have that discussion, but I wonder if the fact that the senators themselves are already staggered so that people will have experience seeing how the president, vice presidents and this, you know, or executive council, because we don't know what model we're going to go with. They will have experience on seeing how the executive council does operate. I don't know if it's necessary that we need to have the executive council be staggered, but I mean, I think that's a, a very, very good question and something that needs to be discussed. Sorry. Um, and then I saw L, you had your hand up, but I did see some other hands prior to that. But it looks like they I was went responding. Down. I was responding to this question, Nick. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead, L, please. Uh, so um, Nick started to touch on this already. Uh, terms for senators will rotate they will be staggered so that we don't ever have a complete turnover uh, but the other thing that has been talked about in the committee is when we have the elections and a little bit of overlap so that the incoming executive council would overlap and therefore be kind of introduced to the processes so that it's not wiping out an entire, all of the um, institutional memory and experience each time. Did, does that answer, respond to your concern or your question, Kristen? Yes, it does, thank you. And I just wanna remind folks, especially the, the newer folks, the expectation is that serving on this group now, that your service would continue through next year, unless you step away yeah. or there's retirement or, or, or other reasons, but um, the initial elections were really for an 18 month term. And I think what we're talking about is future elections after that may be staggered for one or two years. I think that was a that's practice that was a, mentioned by a number of people, but it's up to this group, I think, to decide. Um, yeah, I think, Mike, that this group is positing that the people that were, we actually would have half of the group remain for an additional year of, Above and beyond this oh. current year and a half service, so, so that it does end up. So I could tweet. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's, yeah. It's, it's your group to decide. So I just wanted to clarify though that next year is kind of already uh, expected. Yeah, because if we ended up, I mean, I would, I would think that the majority of the senators. I can't posit that. That I know I would be willing to serve again for another year, um, so that it's not a new person. But you never know. But yeah. that's, I guess, for another discussion. Roberta, I see your hand is up. And then Stephen, you're after Roberta. I am actually ready to make a motion. So I don't want to undermine anyone who wants to speak more on this, but I'd like to get going. So that said, um, I move that we actually reject this proposal. What I would rather replace it with is the co chair model, along with a secretary and a student liaison. Do I have, does Roberta have a second? I'll second, Garcia. I just had a question, I guess. I don't know if I can do that still, but. Yeah. Just Go because, ahead, um, so I'm a guided pathway advisor down at Norwalk Community College. 
Um, and I feel at least down here, and I can't speak for all campuses, that the general like consolidation and the guided pathway ad advising model has met a lot of backlash, I guess, in terms of just cooperation in general and trying to get everyone on the same page. Um, to me, I don't feel like I have enough experience with looking at executive councils and structures to know that like which one of these serves as a the best representation um, for staff and faculty in general. And I guess I'm asking the general question to see if anyone has like more input on which one of these has a better representation model or if like the benefits of having either one of these go through, I guess. Anyone want to address Stephen's questions? Angela? Well, actually, I was not raising my hand to answer his question. Um, my question was about back to the student liaison issue. Um, so I don't know. You want to, somebody wants to answer this question first, or should I go with my question? Um, um, Angela? I, oh, I'm sorry, Kristen. That's okay. It's Kirsten, and I will just uh, say that it, it my my share my opinion that um, I like the executive council model with the president and the vice P, VP roles um, because there's there's more uh, members on the council, right? If I'm reading it correctly, the co chairs yes, there's have, more representation. Yeah. and um, to me, I just think that. You know, considering, you know, the whole, all the whole, all the campuses, the whole CT state that we are, you know, representing, I, I think that having more minds, you know, come together to serve on the council um, will better represent the larger body. Anyone else? Uh, I see Angelo is your hand yeah. still. My up. question what? is about voting on something that doesn't look to me like you're ready to be voted. It's not complete. We did not, I guess, uh, settle on the student liaison uh, credit or uh, remuneration. Um, the question I have for you, since that's a little clear to me, and you know, Nic Nicola said something, and Al said something else. Now. In the bylaws of, of this council, is attendance required or at least expected? Uh, yes. Or it's uh, whenever you can make it. So are you, are you, Angelo, just for clarity, are you asking for the senators in general and including students or just referring oh, yeah, to I'm students? I'm asking, referring to the council chart, right? Okay. So um, the faculty. Attendance would be. Ex Attendance would be expected because voting okay. will be occurring and for the senators to give voice to their campus. Right. It would be fully expected for the senators to be at every meeting. Obviously, um, things happen. We can't always be there. Obviously, um, obviously. Yeah, but we are we expect full participation from all the senators as much so as all, possible. All, all the members of this council will know that. Including yes. students. Okay. Yes. I thought I to know. Thank you. I think we also need to determine if uh, and how how what way the student would be or the student rep would be actually paid uh, for his services or for her services. I think. Okay. Um. Well, I think right now we do have a motion on the table, so I guess at this point in time we can still continue to discuss the model okay. or the differences between the two, and then we can have a vote on whether or not to accept what has been put, because that's correct, that is the motion is to not accept this executive council as such. We can have that vote and then I think we could go back and discuss the student liaison and release, but I okay. guess that question would be, um, I guess we would have to frame that question to President Maduco and the other administrators that are in this meeting and if that is something that could be researched or even entertained. Yeah, so a couple of things in terms of the, the proposed increased um, credit release um, regarding the officers of the executive council or the cabinet, whatever, however we refer to them. Um, you know, my recommendation is please submit a proposal to CT state's cabinet because it's budgetary. So we've set the budget for this. So I would want to allow uh, the administration just to review. You know, can, you know, can we make this work and 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 provide a platform for additional questions um, for this body. And then two, in terms of the student piece, again, it's it's in one vein, look, it's up to the executive council or committee what you guys 
deem or this entire body, which you deem is um, appropriate for um, the student senator. I would add, though, when it comes to student compensation, that's where we just need to be mindful and work with financial aid to ensure that one does it impact the students um, estimated family contribution. Two, does the student senator, is, is there some form of acknowledgement statement or what have you that we would, we would provide to the student state? Do you understand by accepting compensation, it could impact your financial aid status? I, I just, like, so when it comes to the students, this is separate from all of us, right? It's more so, you know, we want to hold our students harmless, even though it's a, I think, a very good gesture. And very thinking outside the box due to the level of work and commitment to this body, you know, beyond this body, the students hear from themselves first. So I just want to make sure that we do our due diligence uh, to at least research and investigate that. I think Steve McDowell, who's our AVP of um, financial aid services and Title IV compliance, would be the best source to say, hey, how how do we how do we deal with this if we do indeed go down this road? Um. Thank you, President Maduro. One thing I would like to add is that, right, when we look at the executive council, the president, the two vice presidents, the secretary, or the co-presidents and the secretary, right, because there will be a student, we have also proposed that a student is on the alternate model also. It is the faculty and staff of the executive council that will be doing the work, right? The student liaison will be attending an additional meeting once a month, the week prior to the actual Senate meeting to set the agenda. So it and it will be them there it will be their opportunity to ensure that student that matters that are very important to students are recognized and put on the agenda that there they will be the voice for students for the agenda setting. I do not expect or I would not expect anyway for them to be doing much other work besides that. So I don't know if that impacts anyone else's decision or thoughts on this for this committee. Um, what I would like to do, if it's okay with the, um, I can't remember who made the initial proposal. I did, I did Roberta. If, Roberta. Yes, I wanted to respond so, to Stephen as well. Okay, I will, let me ask my parliament, who is my parliamentarian expert? Can I make a separate, completely different motion while there is currently a motion on the table to that should be voted on. I don't believe so. I, I defer to Miguel in instances like this. Until yeah, I mean, unless it's germane for to, to amend something like that, you would have to table the, the pending motion and then do something else. We need to dispense with this motion some way somehow. Yes. Um, because I would actually like to make, like, I'm not making a motion, but I just want to let you know what my thought is. I would like to make a motion that we have a vote as to whether or not we recommend students get some sort of compensation. Um, so that discussion. But we need to deal with the initial vote that has been put forth. Is there any more discussion on the vote? The motions that have been made on not accepting the executive council as proposed by the subcommittee. This is Roberta. Um, yes, Roberta. I, I initially, my hands went up to respond to Stephen's question about uh, why the co chair model may be better or not better. And so, um, in my experience, what I have found, Stephen, is that especially with faculty staff oriented um, governance bodies, there are times when faculty have to be somewhere or staff need to be somewhere. And while they have every intention of doing three things at once, somebody is more available than another. That has always worked out well. It also allows for, as we talked about, that continuity of information and the continuity of leadership. And with that in mind, the continuity of leadership isn't just for our organization, but it's also for those that we're working with above us in our governance structure. So it's that continuity of involvement and relationship building with members of the Board of Regents, members of the system staff at Connecticut State. And that's a really important aspect to take into consideration. I, I intentionally did not include or address the student piece in that motion because I feel that it's a broader conversation that 
requires more time and investigation. As President Maduko indicated, we knew it was going to be a financial aid issue, but I just wanted to toss it out there as something we should talk about at some point if we're going to be talking about other people getting credit release and that sort of thing and what their actual role is in the body. Thank you. Thank you, Roberta. Angela. I'm sorry, I left my hand up uh, uh, unintentionally. Sorry. Um. Roberta, okay, um, L, please. So I, I want everyone here to know that the, the Charter and Bylaws Subcommittee discussed the various models not less than six hours. Like we spent three meetings talking about these models and the merits of both. And Every point that everyone has brought up today, except compensation for the student, um, that was not, we didn't drill down that far. Every point that has been made was carefully considered. And in the executive council with a president, two vice presidents, and a secretary prevailed. And that was the recommendation of the committee. So even as we are trying to, and we've been talking about this for almost 45 minutes, please know that that the committee met and really dissected in and and was very thoughtful in making this recommendation to you. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Um, Alan. And then. Thanks. Um, so. Just the question was 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 posed as what is the advantage of one over the other? I, I can only know our, our experience at Gateway. We have a faculty staff council is our primary governing body. And so we have co-chairs. We have a staff, uh, the chair of the staff caucus, chair of the faculty caucus, our co-chairs of our faculty staff council. And um, it works. It, it facilitates cooperation. I think it facilitates mutual respect between faculty and staff. Um, and uh, I, you know, I, if the other model prevails, you know, the, the one that's been proposed, I'm sure it'll work just fine. Uh, but I, I do think that this, the seeing one another as, as equals, uh, and maybe this point that Miguel made, um, who is, who is my co chair, uh, with whom I share, uh, duties, um, that, uh, this being the, the Senate really is the only governing body where. Um, possibly, uh, staff could, could be in a leadership role. The, uh, um, since, since the executive council model has a president, either staff or faculty, uh, it could be a staff member, but not necessarily. So, um, I would, I would like to see that sort of mutual respect, um, reflected in the structure. So thank you. Thank you, Alan. Norley. Um, for me, I, uh, when I went over the three structures, uh, that we proposed, uh, I was in favor in either this one, uh, with 5 members and the other one, uh, with 4 members where we have co-chairs. Um, I mean, I lean more toward this one. It's uh, simply because we have 5 members just in case. Um, students, uh, is allowed to vote. So that means we're going to have 5 members and with 5 members. It's much easier to make a decisions. If uh, 3 out of 5. Vote in favor or not in favor of, uh, decisions, but, um. As Alan just said, uh, when I was looking at this, uh, these two structures, uh, they were really uh, said to be equal to me as well. Miguel, you're muted. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, I, okay. I didn't, I didn't hear you call my name. I'm sorry. Um. Yeah, to to Al's point, there was a lot of discussion, and it was a one vote margin, that one in both cases, um, one vote. It was four three to five four. It went from four to three winning, or from four to three for co-presidents to five to four, for um, the five-person model. 
So th there was a definite split on the committee, much like it sounds like there's a split here, which is not entirely surprising. When you put a bunch of governance leaders in a room, what's going to happen? You're going to have a whole bunch of opinions, right? 35 people and 70 opinions, I think, is the norm, the two to one ratio. Um, so, uh, so you know, I think I think that's where we are. I think we've flushed it out. I think we do need to postpone the student liaison discussion because that's a bigger discussion. I would just like to throw one one piece of information out, which came out um, this morning at the Curriculum Congress, and I and I'm not sure if uh, if Provost Lapierre Drager is still here, um, but there was a discussion this morning about that secretary role, and there was a, a general consensus that the secretary role was never factored in in the beginning, and much like Dr. Maduko said a little bit earlier. Um, uh, uh, my, uh, Provost Lapierre Drager also brought up the idea of of putting forth a proposal um, to to if we need to adjust uh, uh, the release time compensation, whatever it might be. And I I'm not trying to put uh, words in your mouth, Maya. And I'm glad to see you're still here, so you can certainly speak for yourself. But I did want to bring up that idea that it's we're not beholden per se to what is what is written. That is what is approved and budgeted. However, if there is a compelling reason and justification, to me from this morning, it sounded like there would be consideration given, particularly because there was no secretary ever factored in, and that is an important position for, uh, particularly for the Senate and the Curriculum Congress. Yes, Miguel, thank you. Again, um, I'm not a member of Senate or an ex officio, so I, I try to stay quiet in these meetings, um, but thank you for asking. That is correct. Um, and that's why if there is something that exceeds the six credits that was originally allocated, just submit that uh, as a proposal to cabinet because it's a budgetary matter that would need review. That's all. Um, one thing I do want to clarify, because I heard it nuanced earlier in the conversation around this issue, the three credits or the two credits or whatever is the compensation it's not in addition to one. It's these members, the president or co-chairs would get three instead of one. A secretary or whomever would get three instead of one. So it's not like four. So I just want to make sure because it sounded like that was what I was hearing at one point. I just want to make sure that nuance is clarified. Maya, it's Nicola. I think what Miguel was trying to say was just you are you already had one, so you're getting two more. I think that's what he was trying to explain. Yes, and that is correct. So that person would shift from a one credit release to a three credit release, for example. So, for example, just to, to clarify, in Congress, this conversation was very similar. And where Congress landed, and Miguel can attest, he's in Congress as well, and others. Um, Congress landed with a, a, a chair or a president, um, a vice president, and a secretary. And the president has three, the vice has two, the secretary has two, and it was budgetary net neutral because the person who was not accounted for the secretary would have been one, and that shifted to two, and the person who would have been a co at three was shifted down to two, and so it ended up being a net neutral. So they had a three two two structure on that compensation release. It, it, if I could just throw out a quick point, and I, and I apologize, Kirsten, for cutting in front of you, but it just might help in terms of clarification if we think of everybody as one. Then the president model becomes one plus two for the for that person. One plus two, one plus one. So everybody has one. So when we talk about the overages, we have in a in a what, what was budgeted originally was plus four, right? Plus two, one plus two, one plus two for co-chairs. So it's a total of four extra credits if we talk about it from a credit standpoint. You add a secretary, it would be with the same three credit release, it would be one plus two. Right, so that so that's that's sort of I don't know that's helping me anyway figure it out, uh, being a humanities person. Although my dad being the math person, he would be unhappy that I said that. Great, Miguel. thank you, thank you, Maya, thank you, Miguel, uh, Kirsten. Hello, I would like to call the question so that we can have a vote, please, on uh, which structure we are in favor of. Okay, so right now the vote, the motions that are on the table are to reject the currently proposed executive structure. It's not to adopt any other. It's just to reject the proposed structure. So that's uh, not what I said. No, that's not. not oh, sorry, sorry. Yep. Please. <laughs> motion um, was <clears throat> to reject the current structure, replace okay. it with co-chairs, secretary, oh. and the student liaise. 
I apologize. I'm so very right. sorry. There's been a lot of conversation. It's quite all right. Suggest Roberta, if you wouldn't mind typing that in the chat just to help for the minutes and make yeah. sure we capture exactly what everyone's voting on. I know we're voting call the call the question first, but we do need to have the clear clear motion. So that might help. Thanks. Okay, so vote for call to question. All hands, all in favor, raise your hands, please. Just so you know, that does require two thirds, but I don't think it's going to be an issue. <laughs> I only I see nineteen. That's not two thirds. No. Um, President Maduka is not the voting member, right? Yeah, I'm not. Sorry, don't mind me. Just please ignore my actions. <laughs> there are a number of non-voting members on. I'm not a voting member, and some of the deans and others are on as well. I just saw his hand up for a second. That's why I said. Yeah, but there seems to be a number of members that are not voting because we're voting to call the questions, which basically means that we are going to stop discussing and then hold the vote on the motion that Roberta has made. So for point of clarity. And now I see 30. All right, anyone, I am trying to count right now the 30. Anyone confirm the double confirm the 30? It looks like it. Okay, perfect. Call the question. Discussion ends. We now vote on the motion made by Roberta, which is to reject the proposed structure and replace it with a co chair model with a secretary and student liaison. Please raise your hands. If you are in favor of the motion, there, there, there were some hands still up. I'm sorry. I want to. Yeah, everyone, please put your hands down. And, and can we, now, can we clarify there, there's a, something in the chat about co presidents versus co chairs? Sarah C put that in the chat. Oh, it's yes, it's co presidents, not co chair. Uh, co presidents, correct? Yeah, I think so. Right, Roberta? Yes. He's typing away. Either is okay. Okay. All right. So please raise your hands if you are in favor of the. Nicola, I'm sorry. You 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 muted out. I lost you, and I didn't hear the entire. Um. The, uh, oh, sorry. Question. So the the motion or the question? I'm sorry. The motion. The motion is to reject the proposed structure and replace it with a co-chair slash co-president model with the secretary and student liaison. Thank you. You're welcome. I only see nine. I only see nine. Any others? Motion fails. Thank you. You're welcome, Roberta. Point of so order. So now, point of order. Point oh, of yeah. order. Yeah, sorry. Alan, please help me. Thank you. I'm sorry. I think my parliamentarian parliamentarian friends might help. But technically, you know, it would need a majority of vote of voting members. So say um, a large number of people choose to abstain, the 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 the, you the have motion to vote could no and abstain. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. I'm sorry. I I apologize. It has been a couple years since I have had to run a meeting. So I do apologize. So now all those voting no against the motion on the table, please raise your hand.
I got 22. Did it what? Nick, what did you get? Um, it jumped, so I don't, I have to go back and start. I got 23, I think. Okay. Got 24. Anyone else want to double check? Well, either way. Either way, but I don't know for point of order for minutes. Um, is, is there, I think, does that include everyone? Is there any abs abstentions? Well, we have to, we have to put our hands no, we have to down. Yeah. Yep. All right, let's put our hands like. We'll put our hands down. And then any abstentions, please. I see one Nicole abstaining. I see one abstention. Oh, no, wait, did the hand go down? Oh, the hand goes, the hand went down. Okay, so no abstentions. So the motion fails. I'm sorry. And thank you for all my parliamentarian experts and helping me with remembering how I'm supposed to run a vote. I do apologize. Nick, I would like to make a motion that we accept the recommendation of an executive council made by the charter committee. Is there a second? Angela, second. 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 We have a second. Any discussion? The only thing I want to say is this <clears throat> um, back to attendance and all that. Uh, this is an important body. I believe that all those who are going to be uh, running for those positions know that. And if it, these people already know they are too busy in knowing they have to go to different meetings and they, and they most likely are going to be missing uh, Senate meetings and all that, they should be not running for the position. Um, whoever's going to be deciding to run for the position should be making this buddy their priority. And I believe that um, um, attendance is really, really important. I'm also hearing numbers are very small. The, 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 the vote differences, one vote difference. So I think that being, being coming to a meeting well informed uh, is direct result of having attended the meetings. And if somebody missed a bunch of them, well, that you know, that person would not be in the opposition to actually vote based on information acquired. It would be just um, guessing. I don't know. So I think that is, to my perspective, really important. So whoever is going to be running, who is interested in these positions, should really make sure that their commitments to other um, committee stuff should not be their priority. Their priority should be being in this committee. If they cannot make it, then they shouldn't put their name in. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. Thank you, Angelo. Um, Asantoa, um, I, please, if I butchered your name, I'm very, very Um, Is there a way to amend that you also include this, this time, um, time limits or term limits uh, before we accept this structure? If I, think if I that's... can be so bold, the term limits are actually uh, part of the, the charter document that we're working on. And so uh, and I, I was just trying to, to write something in the chat that made sense of this, that all of the points that all of you are making are things that the, the Charter and Bylaws Committee are discussing in sometimes painful but important detail. And we would love to have more people in, in, involved in those conversations. But term limits are discussed in that document. We just haven't finished it yet, but it will be brought up. Yeah, we felt it was important to get the executive council um, populated so that the Senate is able to run the meetings and set the agenda. So that we, the term limits are part of the larger discussion that is happening within that subcommittee. 
So we have any other discussion on the proposed, the subcommittee proposed five person executive council structure. No further discussion, then can I please have hands raised for those all in favor of the proposed Nick, five Mike, person? Mike had a question. Oh. Mike, did, Mike, I didn't see your hand, I'm sorry. It's okay, no, I, I'm not able to virtually, but I, I was able to create a poll. Um, so folks can vote via poll. We can certainly do the raised hands if you'd prefer, or we could try the poll. It. it can capture individual responses so that we, you know, we'll have a record of the vote. Um, so, so it's the group. Is, is anyone against the poll taking the poll or voting via the poll that was created by Mike? L, you have your hand up. No, did your hand go down? I was voting. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I will say that the one advantage that we have for raising hands is we do see who's voting. We see where people are and and that can inform additional discussion. But I'm not an adherent to adherent to either. I, mean, I think we're in good shape. I think we can just do the, the hands raised. I mean, we might use the poll later, but okay. Okay, sure. that's fine then. All right. So those in favor of the five person executive council, please raise your hands. I got 26, Nicola. I also get 26. Thank you, Alan. Everyone, please raise your uh, lower your hands. Those not in favor, please raise your hands. I see four not in favor. Any abstentions, please? Three abstentions. Is Angela was your hand? No, wait. Nope. Uh, I left it up again. Sorry. No, 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 no. It's totally fine. Can we do the yeah. abstentions again, please? I apologize. Two. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. The five person executive council has passed. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't want to step no, on your toes, but um, I am, was hoping to schedule a break for the group at some point. I don't know if this is an appropriate time if the group wants to continue going on. Um, certainly, it's your, your your presiding officer. It's your call. <laughs> um, honestly, I think a, a a five to ten minute break would actually be good because if anyone has not had the time to read the bios that have been posted to our teams for the people who have self nominated as one of the executive council positions. Um, so if we take a, what time is it now? It's 126, why don't we return at 135? Hopefully that will give people enough time. Um, I don't wanna take too long of a break because I, we only have an hour left and I would like to get through some of the agenda items. Quick question, Teams or SharePoint? Yes. Oh, SharePoint, sorry. Okay, From, cool, thank you. Yep, sorry about that, SharePoint. Thank you, Sarah. Right, and I do, we would like to get to policy items if possible today. We have a bit of a timeline crunch on those this semester. So just wanted to put that out there. Thank you, Nicola. Yep. Uh, you're welcome, Michael. Okay, I'll see everyone back at 135. Sorry, I didn't mean to interject. Thank you, sorry, I missed it coming back. Yep. It is recording now again. Thank you, everybody. For the recording, I think we should just have that nomination. Re just repeat it verbally. Leave the hands up. You're on mute. Nick. Yeah, 
Yes, 30, 32. Thanks, Bonnie, I was counting. 32 in favor of L, do I have any no's? Um, has everyone lowered their hand from the previous vote? Jennifer, is your hand up from the previous vote or are you voting now? Thank you. There are no no's. Any abstentions? No abstentions. Congratulations, L. Would you like to take over? <laughs> Actually, Nick, I'm going to ask that you continue because I don't think that any of these votes are effective until the end of this meeting. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. But um, I will, given given that I believe you put your name in for vice president, I will um, I will take a nomination or accept you. nominations from the floor for vice president for faculty. Any other nominations? So Nicola is running for it, you said? Nicola is running for vice president of faculty. Her statement of candidacy was in the folder. Would right. anyone else like to nominate from the floor? No, but I'd like to second Nicola. Thank you very much. Hearing no other nominations. Uh, can we all those in favor? of voting for Nicola for vice president of faculty, please raise your hand now. And Nick, you can vote for yourself. <laughs> you, you, you can. And I get 34. Does anyone else get a vote, a, a tally other than 34? Very good. Everyone can put their hands down. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Anyone voting against the vice president, uh, Nick filling the role of vice president of faculty? Betty, your hand is up. There we go. Safira, are you voting no? Okay. I'm sorry, I couldn't lower my hand for a second. No worries. No, no worries. That's why we ask. Thank uh, you. And, and any abstentions? Very good. Congratulations, Madam Vice President. And I will turn the floor back over to you. Thank you, Madam President. Okay. And then we have a another nomination for Vice President for staff. Um, okay. And that is John Fiorello. John, am I saying that right? John, you got it right. Got it right. Perfect. Do I have any nominations from the floor? Can I get a second for John's nomination, please? I'm sorry. There's a hand up for. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. It's Brian who has his hand up. Thanks, yes, thank you. Uh, I was wondering if there was opportunities for other nominations or at that point, the 2nd, the 22nd deadline is firm. Um, I apologize. I was banner testing all week long in Hartford. It's the, uh, missed the deadline. So. Anyone against someone that's self nominating today. Brian, did you want to self nominate today? 
I did. I missed the deadline. And so I would respectfully ask, obviously, the executive committee or the rest of the Senate if they would be willing to consider that. If not, I will use it and move forward. This is Roberta. I would accept the nomination. And I would too. And this is Bonnie. Nick, I think you can ask for are there any objections? I think you're right. Yeah. Are there any objections to Brian self nominating? Is it Brian, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, Brian self nominating now. Any objections? If there are, please raise your hands. It looks, Brian, that you may self nominate. Um, I Great. guess at, at this point in time. Um, um, Madam Vice President? Yes, Norley. Um, because we already have a little uh, summary for uh, John, mm -hmm. I wonder if Brian can just tell us a little bit about himself, even for 30 seconds. So Ooh, I was actually perfect, Norley. That was um, exactly what I was thinking. So if everyone, Brian, if you would like to take a minute to um, think of the what you would like to present to the Senate, and then please do so. Um, if anyone has not had the moment to read what has already been posted in our SharePoint, um, please do that, and then we will allow Brian his minute to speak. Any objections to that? No, but Mike, can you set up a poll? to vote for either John or Brian. I tried to send you a message and for some reason, I can only send a message to Roberta Pryor. <laughs> I will attempt to do so. Thank you. Evidently I'm popular. Am I all set? Yes, Brian, if you're ready, please. So again, I appreciate the Senate for considering this nomination at this time. I would just like to say that active member of CT State, including an elected uh, chapter chair for the New Britain chapter with the staff. Um, I appreciate this work that we're going to be move forward as far as heavy policy related. Um, I have a lot of experience, especially uh, in policy work as long as I am I, as well as an adjunct faculty member for a doctoral program in the local area teaching higher ed policy. So I'm very well versed on a lot of these policy initiatives. I, I, I would appreciate the opportunity to be able to uh, work in a leadership perspective. A lot of people on this call already know me, so I'm not going to take too much time on it. But like I said, I would just appreciate the opportunity. I understand and have listened over the course of this, uh, over the course of this afternoon about the importance of this role and being present uh, and, and would humbly accept a vote if, if offered. So. Thank you and appreciate your time. Thank you, Brian. Um, someone help me on this is um, just for, I don't know if it's a point of clarification, but should we allow John an opportunity to speak also, or the fact that his was, his was posted in the candidate files? Any thoughts on that? I think I would it's at the that. discretion of the chair. So it's my it's me it's up to me is that what I you're mean, saying? Unless there's objection, if there's no objection, I, it, it's it's entirely allowable. Yeah. Is there any objection to allowing John a moment to speak? No, just a personal feeling, uh, Nicola. Okay. Uh, despite the statement that he has put in, uh, I don't think any anything should prevent him from saying something. Perfect. Well, then, John, do you agree? Are you okay to talk? Yeah, sure. I can say hello. Everybody. <laughs> um, now, if you want, I can just read the uh, statement of candidacy and then that would save everybody the hassle. But no, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to serve. Um, currently serving as a director of the Entrepreneurial Center here at Northwestern, uh, one of two entrepreneurial centers across uh, the 12 uh, state community colleges. Um, I love working with uh, folks outside of the college ecosystem as well as inside because my job does a little bit of both. And um, I'm glad to be able to serve in this capacity uh, if you'd have me. Thanks. Thank you, John. Mike, where are you at in the poll generation? I think I'm ready to launch. All ready? All right, I think so. Is there any further discussion? See no hands. Mike, if you could please launch that vote and that poll. Thank you.
Mike, whenever those results are ready, we are patiently waiting. Okay. I'm just waiting to see if there are any more final votes before I close the poll. Okay. And I believe this should share the results. Are people seeing? Results John Fiorello 17 out of 37 votes cast. Brian Campinos 14 out of 37 votes, three abstentions. There we go. Congratulations, John. Congratulations, John. Did that come up on people's screens? I tried to share it. Yep, okay. Yes, it did. Yeah, we can I'm learning polling and WebEx. It's a little different than Teams. So, yeah. I definitely think that's the way to vote going forward. It's much easier than counting hands. But that will be up to Madam President. All right. Um, what is next on the agenda, Mike? Because I cannot find my agenda. Sure. So um, I do. I am hoping that we can get to some of the policy items. But let's take a look. Um, and Amy Fest is here. I see a hand up. But um, this is our agenda. We had uh, conducted elections. We had a charter subcommittee report. I think we've talked a little bit about that, but we could revisit it. And then there was were some policy proposals from uh, Amy. And I think I see a, I saw a hand pop up. I'm not sure whose it was. You know, is it Alan? Yep. Alan, yep. Yeah, I don't want to jump ahead if anyone's ahead, but that's what I see. Yep. Oh, is my hand my hand still up? Let me take my hand down. Okay, Alan, please. Thanks, Nicola. Oh, um, oh, we have secretary. That's right. Yeah, well, that that was my point that uh, we we approved a, a, an executive committee that includes a secretary, but we didn't have a vote for that. No, well, you know, I completely slipped my mind because we don't have any no one nominated, but we can have take nominations from the floor. Thank you, Alan. What's the job description again? Um, as of right now, the job description hasn't really been ironed out. That is still work of the subcommittee um, as to the essential duties and please anyone from the subcommittee or anyone else on this body. Correct me if I'm wrong. It would be to take the minutes, but not detailed minutes. Well, I guess that's another thing that the committee, this committee has to decide if we are going to um, record all of the meetings. I don't, I'm not sure President Maduco, is that something that is being required of this body for everything to be recorded? Um, I guess, I guess my thoughts would, I guess I would, you know, um, boomerang the question back to this group. You know, what are our thoughts? I think obviously, since I've been here, there have been expressed concerns related to transparency. I believe the members. Of this Bobby, both voting and non voting members, we got nothing to hide. So I don't think it hurts. No, um, I agree to record it and share it. But obviously, I want to, uh, I don't want to impose that um, expectation or directive more so. What's the will of the people here? I guess I would start with Madam President. I think a lot of committees have uh, secretaries and minutes. So um nobody ever complained about that so i think it's a good thing i yeah. guess nick could oh, we go ahead. could we uh at the risk of abusing uh mike stefanowitz right now mike can you do a quick poll on uh recording the meetings we'll get an answer on that but i would also simultaneously like to nom nominate with his permission uh brian Capinos for secretary. Just, yeah, as I'm creating the poll, I just want to share just so folks uh, are understand the recordings we've made and the transcripts that have been created have only been posted within the folder that you have access to currently. So those are not public right now. Um, and certainly I, I'll, I'll create the poll. You could decide to share the recordings. You could decide to keep the recordings within the committee. And the transcripts and just share minutes. Um, you know, you are not legally bound to to share, unlike some of the legislative bodies like FAC is, is records the meetings and they're on YouTube and things like that. It's not a requirement of this body, to my knowledge. Um, so I do think you have the discretion to to share as much or as little as you'd like. Um, 
and I'll work on creating the poll now. Thanks. I would, Al, my question to you again, I guess to the rest of this body is, do we expect to see the duties of, of a secretary being altered by having these meetings recorded and posted to not just SharePoint, but to the entire community, Connecticut State at large? Because then I would think that the secretary's responsibilities would be much less or much more reduced because it would be more um, less detailed and more big picture as far as the note the note taking. Unless I'm wrong on that, so it, it, um, risking speaking for the body, Robert's rules of orders provide a structure but not the nuances of how this body will choose to act. Robert's Rules of Order can be and should be tailored for every organization to meet its needs. So I would say that it would be up to the Charter and Bylaws Committee to make a recommendation to this body. Um, I guess that would be pertinent. That would be based on the, what the choice of this body is with the recordings. So a nomination was made for Brian if he chose to accept it, and if he did accept it, I would second. Thank you, Roberta. Brian. Thoughts on that nomination? Sure. Thank you. That's it. You're welcome. And then any further discussion? And we please vote on having Brian be the secretary of the executive council. Please raise your hands for all in favor. I got 30, Nicole. I got 31. Else? I got 31 again. So 31 in favor. Do I have any no's? Everyone else from the previous vote, please lower your hands. I still see four hands up, but does my hand appear up? Because on mine it does, and it should not be. Do you guys see that? Is it down? Okay. Um, Peter, Shyla, and Mirdred, yours are up for the nose, correct? Oh, 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 maybe. Okay. No, that was a mistake on my part. No, I was a yes. So. No, no, it's all good. Um, it's sometimes are hard know. to get fast enough. I see zero nose. Any abstentions, please? I have one abstention. Thank you. Congratulations. And then the on the agenda, the next on the agenda was an update on what the charter has. The subcommittee has worked through at this point. Um, yes, Sorry to interrupt. did you want to do a straw poll or a motion about recording or do we want to? Later. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, no, that's um, okay. Uh, sure I'm, that I'm fine with a straw poll for that. Yeah. Any okay. any objections? Barring any objections, I think we should do a straw poll. Oh, I think I launched it. <laughs> you did. You did. It okay. looks perfect. Thank you. It's just dissemination to be determined. I think that's a different discussion about who it's shared with, right? But this gives the the, the committee some 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 uh, direction.
Okay, it looks like uh, I will be closing the poll. Last last votes getting in. Looks like a clear. Sure. Okay, it looks like a clear uh, 31 votes yes, two votes no, zero abstentions, um, and, and there are three non voting members on the call. So, clear direction to record meetings. Perfect. Thank you, Mike, so much. Um, yeah. Mike, I would like to, um, on the agenda, we would, the subcommittee wanted to present to this body the work that we have accomplished thus far. Um, but for some reason, when I go into SharePoint, I, my computer is just thinking about opening up the draft with the edits that we've made. I don't know if that's something that you can get into and share for us. I believe this is the document. Is that correct? Um, it is in the January meeting folder. Yes, this is it right there. Thank you. Okay. So all of us, um, every person that is on this committee has access to this draft document that the committee has been working through. Um, you'll see that there are several comments to the right of the document um, that this document has been what we've been working on and discussing in the meetings that we have had, the three meetings that we've had, two or three. Um, and if Mike, if you could scroll down, um, some of them were just points of order as far as making some minor corrections, changing the name, um, looking at right up, uh, stop real quick, go oh, slow down just a little bit. Yep, right here, looking at the organization, the elected faculty, elected staff, elected at large. We just did a little housekeeping to tidy that up to make it very clear as to where the um, bodies were coming from and how many. Um, what the composition of this body looked like. Um, Mike, if you could go down more, please. Sorry, thank you for doing this. Um, you can see the elected and then the terms. This is something that we have been working on. I mean, you can see all of the edits that have been there. Um, we went from originally there were uh, two consecutive terms. That would be four years. The subcommittee felt that a six year maximum would be more beneficial to this body for continuity reasons. The reason as to why it was decided that term limits should be in place is to ensure that a one person who may would not be able to monopolize the position for an extended period of time. And monopolize is probably not the proper term or the correct term, but just trying to be quick in my summation. Um, adjunct um, participation is always difficult because of the fact that many, not all, but many of them already have jobs during the day. So it would be difficult to um, ensure that they're able to come to the meetings to participate and vote. I mean, that's not always the case, um, but for many of the times it is, but that really hasn't been a discussion um, of note in our meeting. So that is something that I guess this body should discuss at a, another point in time. Vacancies and removal, um, we have, this is something that's still uh, very much a work in progress, trying to figure out the document provided a removal process or at least a, a removal option for the campuses, and then also a removal option for the this body itself. The body itself, as of right now, um, it's a two thirds supermajority to remove as written, and this is still up for discussion. And again, we actively would encourage any others to come participate in our subcommittee meetings. Um, a two thirds majority supermajority to remove a senator from this body. So, like I said, that is still in process. Um, eligible nominations and elections. Um, you know, only self nominations are accepted because we don't want I, that. I think is a pretty clearly a um, a winner in our discussions because we were afraid that if we had people that were nominated and didn't want to be nominated, it could end up holding um, up elections in the process. Senate officers, 
uh, just talking about the executive body um, right there. We have officers serve a 1 year term with no limit on the number of terms served. That would technically um, be, per they would be term limited to their 6 years. So I, you know, in that definition that way, this is still something that is being worked on. This is not, um, we haven't finished that. Um. Let's see, uh, keep going, Mike, please. Oh, proxy votes. Um, this is something that is very much a work in progress. I think this was something that was actually discussed within the subcommittee. Um, L or Sarah, I think either one of you, please correct me if I'm wrong, but we wanted to actually bring that to this, to this body for discussion at some point in time. The explicit issue of proxy voting was something we did want to bring back to this this body, but I think for today, not today, no, not in, today. In yeah, favor just... of, of trying to get through the agenda, we will okay. ask for a little more time. Yes. Okay, but yeah. So I just wanted to let them I'm know. I'm sorry, that. I, I have to interject. I don't agree. I think we need to get the 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 inclination of the body on proxy voting because there was such division in the subcommittee. Um, I I I think we need to at least do a quick straw poll on that. Um, because I want direction from the body. If there is a clear direction at all. I can create a quick straw poll that yeah. if we'd like, uh, let me yeah. start. Yeah. Nick, Do could you just sort of review the, the, the pros and cons of, of proxy voting for everybody? Yes, Mike, if I, I'm sorry, I know you're trying to create that straw poll, okay. but could you go back to that 1 particular part of proxy voting? Yep, right there. So. This was added by the subcommittee, um, but the subcommittee is very divided on whether or not proxy voting should be allowed. Um, there has been no discussion for voting in absentia, just the proxy voting has been discussed. The pros and cons of proxy voting we are all very aware of is that a person may end up leaving the meeting early, have their proxy in place and be ready to vote, but then new items for discussion or new variables are brought into the discussion that may actually end up changing what that vote actually entails. And then the proxy vote, how do ends up being cast and may not be what that person had in mind. Um, it also has, it can extend the time it takes for a vote to happen. Um, let me see what else might, what else am I forgetting? My subcommittee members. L. I did not see the chat. Anyone please. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. I was, I was going to say, I, I was trying to get to my own uh, notes, but. It's okay. It, it's kind of irrelevant that the. The important part is getting input from the Senate. The Senate. Yeah. May I ask a clarification question? Yes, please. And and uh, I'm 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 hoping Miguel will help with this. But if you recall, Miguel, this morning uh, proxy you mentioned is like a mail-in or a uh, vote. But here proxy seems to be a live person in in your place. So that's what I'm confused about. Yeah. So somebody else made the call, called it a mail-in vote. I I don't know. Essentially, the the, the issue is this: a proxy vote allows somebody who cannot be at the meeting or for the present for a vote to have somebody else vote for them. So that's the pro is that their vote can be counted. The downside is if the the proxy is given and the the issue on which it's going to be voted on changes in any way. Um, and or if there is significant discussion and even if it doesn't change, that person is not privy to the discussion. So the argument, the, the, an argument against is that it becomes a more uninformed decision um, and or a decision which is not, which was not made on the item if the item gets changed. Um, it, is a, it is a form of in, in absentia voting. Um, that's, that's what proxy voting is. The other thing, hypothetically, is that if somebody could do it, um, you could round up 21 proxies and just vote by the majority. Now, I don't think that would ever happen, but hypothetically. So those are sort of the issues with proxy voting uh, from my perspective. I don't know if anybody else wants to chime in. 
Anyone else chime Senator, in or questions? I prematurely launched the poll. I apologize, <laughs> but thank you for that explanation. We go. Well, I'll let you say one thing as a member of the promotion committee, for example, this is a committee where uh, being absent, uh, it's a big deal. Uh, and, um, you know, allowing having a colleague voting for you, as you said, Michael, uh, Miguel, um, I, I think things change during the conversation. Yeah. And therefore, that same person who may be in favor of that promotion may change, would have changed his mind if it has stayed in the office. And I go back to what I said before. I mean, if you're thinking that your schedule is too busy, you're involved in too many committees and all that, don't commit yourself into this kind of position. Other committees is different, but like in in this case here, I, I think uh, that's my opinion again. Um, no, it, it, it should not be allowed. Uh, maybe one exception, if that'd be admissible to have one exception. Uh, otherwise, uh, people should know ahead of time what they're getting themselves into. And if you, your presence is going to be required every time, and if you can't make it, uh, then the person should not be uh, in that committee. So, that, of course, there's always, again, pandemics <laughs> and <the> nuclear wars <laughs> and all those things that might happen. But that's my, my thought. Thank you, Angelo. Anyone else? Sarah is uh, has oh, Sarah, please. Also, we have the um, technological issues to consider that we've been using polls and raising hands, and I don't even know how that would work with proxy voting. Good point. Good point. Anyone else? Medrad, is your hand still up or do you have more to? Perfect. Yep. So, yep. to, to um, just, just to clarify, this is a straw poll to guide the committee in terms of their deliberations as they write language. This is not the vote on yay or nay for proxy voting. This is just to, to guide the committee. I just want to make sure that's clear. Mike, is that still posted, the poll? It should be still posted. Yes. It's counting down about a minute left. Hopefully people, I don't know if it pops up in your chat or if it's in your it, window. Mine, it was there and it disappeared, so I can't uh, vote. I don't know. If you, you should be able to see a line that says polling, do the down arrow. Move it from side arrow to down arrow. And it should pop back up. Do you have a, uh, a, a window with title polling? Yeah. Kind of like how the chat closes when the polling pops up initially. You can open yeah, close the field. You got the on the uh, uh, right low right corner. There is a little two three dots. If you click on it, oh, I see it. I got it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, it looks like the poll closed. Um, we have 11 yes, 17 no, two abstentions. So it looks like the group is, is weighing in mostly against, but there are some folks in favor to guide the group. Thanks. That's helpful. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. Yep. And if, if I, uh, Madam Vice President and, and Presiding Officer, if I could ask that we at least introduce the concept of the policy recommendations. Um, I'm sorry to, to interrupt, but this is, is important for our NECHI update and our NECHI accreditation as the single college. And um, Amy Fest, who's a guest today, is like has been patiently waiting. And if we could at least introduce the topic, that would be wonderful so that so that we could get some action next month, um, no later than next month, um, if that's okay. Is there any objections from the floor? Seeing no objections, Mike, please, Amy. And I did, I just want to say too, I put a link to the document of the draft charter um, in the chat. So everyone can certainly wait, look, look at that. And um, track changes looks like it's turned on. So folks can make comments. So um, I'm sorry we didn't get to go through the whole thing, but we can certainly pick that up next, next month. So Amy, I can call up the document if you want to. Well, yeah, while you're calling up that document, I just want to, I want to ask that um, if you're not a member of the committee, yet, but you'd like to be, uh, please let us know that you want to join the Charter and Bylaws Committee, but don't make changes to the document until our next meeting. 
So thank you for that, Mike. Thank you, Mike. I really appreciate it. So um, thank you today for letting me come and um, present to all of you some work on the CT state policies. Um, this work has been going on for about two years on various levels. Um, and we are to the point now where now that um, this body is stood up, we do have the first round of some revisions and so, uh, at least one here new policy that we would like to present to the Board of Regents on behalf of CT State. So just a little background, um, there have been five subgroups formed um, that are looking at the current BOT policy manual. And for those of you who are unfamiliar here, we have a Board of Trustees from um, a, a it's about 20 years old, to be completely honest. I have a link to it that is actually right in this document that you were all sent. Um, that is alive and well and sits at the Board of Regents on the um, website. And that document, all of those policies, unless they literally know rescinded, are still alive and are still the, the documents that are guiding the community colleges. So this seemed like a perfect time to despite being as, as crazy as we are, but to go through all of those policies and to decide which ones were really imperative to continue to stay on the books at the Board of Regents um, for CT State. And once we started to decide which ones we needed to keep because they were not addressed in any other board policy that is currently on the board's um, website, we then needed to make a couple decisions on them. One, whether they needed to just be simply have a minor editorial update, which is really just changing some of the language, like from saying Board of Trustees to Board of Regents or the colleges to CT State. Whether they had some revisions that just needed to be updated because 20 years has passed and some of the, the wording in it was no longer um, applicable to really where we are today. And other ones that are substantial revisions where the old policy was not student focused, student friendly um, policies that may no longer represent what we need to do based on federal um, financial aid guidelines, those types of things. So coming before you today is the first of what will be really a series of policies. The first couple though, this month and next month are really important for us to get through to the Board of Regents by their last meeting of this academic year. And um, as you all know, once it leaves this committee, it then needs to go to the appropriate subcommittee of the board, the ASA or the finance subcommittee, and then to the full board. And given the timing of all of that, we are we are trying to get everything that needs to get through for CT State through. You will, after all of this is done, see additional policies next academic year, but they won't be ones that are determined to be really as important or as critical that we want to get into the seats into CT State before that. Um, L, do you want? Do you, I see you have your hand up. I don't want to let something wait. If you have a question, I could quickly answer and and boy, then we go on another path. Uh, I I'm wondering if you have these changes in a track changes document. Uh, I, I was looking to try to understand the context of each of them, yep. especially for the substantial changes. I don't actually, um, we, we could work on that to get that to you. These came to me in a variety of different manners. Um, so we did not do them as a track change document, but I can definitely, I mean, I could definitely get to what was with the BOR policy before the new policy on the substantive ones specifically and do a track changes and get them to this group. I would certainly like to see them. I, I did spend uh, th three different times this week. I did try to uh, ferret out the differences and I kept coming back to if the differences were made more clear in a track changes kind of format, it would be easier for us to see what we are, um, what we're being asked to vote upon. Okay. So do you want all of them or just the substantive? I will leave that to the body. Okay. So, so, um, you know, this, what I, we're looking from this body, um, hopefully at the next meeting, but there will be some more coming your way for the next meeting as well. And we will get them to you as soon as we possibly can, um, is just to give, you know, your input, your, um, your approval for these documents to move forward to the BOR. Amy, I, I had a quick question for you. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you saw my hand. The 
Um, there's a couple, it's a little further down where it's not policy language. Rather, it's, um, uh, it, it's sort of like the intent versus the actual policy language. I, I, I'd have to go back and look at it more closely. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a good example right there. BOT 3.8 academic standing uh, shall have an academic standing policy yeah. procedure, which shall be separate, but it doesn't have the policy. Yes, actually, somebody pointed that out earlier that the language in that they didn't feel so this one in particular. This one in particular, and Mike Stefanowitz can actually um, give some background. Well, we have worked on this particular item for about 6 months because. What we are trying to do, 1st of all, the old. I, I think we can wordsmith this to make it more of a policy and I think it actually is. Um, there sh shall be a procedure for students who fall below the 2.0 grade point average. I think we can probably take some of that first part of it out, which will then make it more of a policy. The old board policy and procedure on academic standing was really 99% procedure and very little policy. And the procedure was very punitive. That was the academic warning and the academic, I mean, sorry, the academic probation and the academic suspension. One of the things that we've really tried hard to do is to look through these policies through a lens of um, student through equity, through really being more student friendly and things like where it said probation and suspension before we're now moving more to warning and putting in supports rather than just saying we're going to just put you on warning. And if you don't change your academic um, GPA, then you're going to be dismissed from the college. So there's a the policy is supposed to just say that we're going to have a procedure in place. So we can clean that one up slightly. Somebody earlier in this meeting had mentioned that one to me. Um, and it's funny because this has gone through about 50 people and, and nobody really has pointed that out. But after it was pointed out and I'm looking at it, I'm like, I can see where we need to take that when the first half of it probably needs to be changed. Yeah, I, and I believe there's a, a few more, Amy, that are like that as well. So, uh, and I believe it's towards the end of the document. So people maybe just got tired and didn't get to it or whatever. So okay. if you want to review that, that'd be great. And, and Thank you. Just add, Amy, as well, that, that just so people realize many of our policies that were carried over from the old board of trustees prior to the merger with the universities were very prescriptive policies. And the, the old board of trustees purposely were very prescriptive because they wanted all 12 colleges following the same rules and not open to interpretation. Um, newer policies are more general because the Board of Regents defines policies for both the colleges and the universities. But as an example, the Board of Regents does not tell Central, Eastern, Southern, or Western what their academic standing policy should be. They leave that up to the university. And I think we feel strongly that, that they should treat us the same way. So part of what's happening here is we're trying to pull out the details the details are not needed because we're one college. So naturally we will have consistent policy and procedure in all of our campuses. Uh, we have one academic standing policy that applies to all of our students. So we're trying to kind of normalize the difference that happens when we did the merger of the colleges and universities. And that's a good example, Miguel, of what you pointed out, which is, you know, the board should really just say we should have a policy on this. And then we determine the policy and the procedure of how to implement it. Certainly they can set parameters or guidelines or bumpers. Um, but unless the board wishes to get that details, um, we should be able to have the authority to determine kind of how, how we do that. that. And that's what some of this language is changing. Um, so just to add some clarification on that, and I do think it will be helpful to give some more clarification um, as, as the wording kind of like attract changes. Um, you know, we don't want to go back to the board every time if we make a minor revision to our academic standing policy. That shouldn't necessarily need a vote by the full board. Um, the board should say develop a policy and procedure, and then we follow it internally. So that's kind of the theory behind why some of these things read the way they do. I can't see all the hands, but I do see Nicola has her hand up. Yeah, Amy, it's it's Nicola. Um, Oops. I honestly, because of the, and I speak only for myself, I'm not speaking for the Senate. It was very difficult for me to actually find the time to 
purposefully go through these having only been released to us a few days ago. Um, and my this week for me was incredibly busy. So I would just ask, and again, this is my personal request, not the bodies that any of the documents for us for um, to be voted on for next year, if you could please get those to us at least seven days before the next Senate meeting, that would be very helpful for me. Th that was my goal. Unfortunately, it got hung up on people who had to see it before you and I do apologize. It's no, no, I, I, understand. I understand completely. All right. Thank you. Completely understand. And I, I think there'll be less coming forward the next time there will be some to add on to this. And there are two other hands up now too, Amy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because the documents in front of me, I can't see it. Okay. Um, Roberta. Roberta, are you there? I think you're muted or yeah, you're still muted. Yeah. I apologize. Sorry, sorry about that, everyone. Amy, thanks for um putting this together. I if we have specific questions or concerns, is there anywhere you would like for us to direct them? Prior to the next meeting, so that perhaps some action can be taken in advance. Me, me, just I will put my email in the chat. Although I think most of you might have it, but yeah, just throw them at me, and I'll make sure that I vet them to the right place. Perfect. Thank you. My my question and is a question and a comment, and I was wondering, Amy, if you could put it, put these documents or this document in SharePoint so that we can use track changes and comments. So everybody knows what the questions are. For example, uh, when I was looking at the uh, information related to incompletes, I thought, oh, okay, but what happens if a, a part-time lecturer is issuing an incomplete? How do we address that? So I would like, if, if it's possible, to have those documents put in SharePoint, we can turn on track changes, and that way we can see, everybody can see both the questions and the responses. That that's perfectly fine. Yes, and and else your point about part timers, that's the kind of things that we're hoping we can address, and we can definitely look at where it fits in the policy as well. But we want to keep a lot of that into procedure, which um, will keep it. The perfect example of what Mike was saying before that happened recently is the the six schools of CT State used to have different names, and when we tweaked the name slightly, we had to go all the way back through the board. So the board suggested that we just say CT State will have the school, you know, school, six schools or have schools. And then every time we decide we want to change a name, we don't have to go back to the board. That's what we're kind of hoping to do with all of these policies as as well. But yeah, no, that and Mike and I can work to get it into track um, into SharePoint, and we will. I will. I will try really hard over the next couple of days to do this. I um. I have to go to a conference in Denver Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So I will try before the end of the weekend to get these changes in so that you'll have them for next week. But worst case scenario, I may have to do them while I'm away next week. Thank you, ma'am. And I want to just thank the group for taking the time to to, to kind of tee this up and review this. Um, yeah, it, yeah, this helps. This helps a lot. So I know what you need so that I can. It was very hard because you will see when I do track changes, some of these policies to start. We're like eight pages long, and we've now made them down to two paragraphs. So track changes may look a little crazy. That was one of the things we debated whether it was going to be too much information under track changes. But if you prefer to see it that way, absolutely no problem. Happy to do that. Thank you, Amy. It Thank is you, two twenty. Oh, you're welcome. Two twenty eight. Two more minutes. Correct. We're done at two thirty. My time correct? correct. Yeah. Um. Any. Other pertinent information or anything on the agenda we can get done in 2 minutes. And Roberta is your hand still up from before or new question. There you go. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. L, do you want to the items that you wanted to put on the agenda? Do you want to table those for our next meeting? They can go under under. Uh, it, we didn't old get to business? that. So are they, yeah, we didn't are get they to new so business? New business. Are they old business? I guess we'll figure that out for the next meeting. Perfect. Is we'll there anything our, else? You, you, does we'll anyone have to, just to remind folks, it was course capacity caps, course releases for Connecticut State. I believe that is that for governance zone in particular. And, yeah, and uh, we we did begin to have that conversation yeah. today. Um, new survey main campuses versus satellites, and then. Um, someone else had put in the chat another item of adjunct faculty representation. So, right. 
Is there a motion to adjourn, my friends? And then you don't have to make an emotion. <laughs> run a meeting ever. I'll third it. No, I'm just <laughs> approved. <laughs> <laughs> motion carries. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you guys. Thank you for Thank you so um, much today. Nice I appreciate weekend. it. Thank you. Yeah, Take care, everyone. Good, good everyone. Weekend, good weekend, everyone. Great weekend, everyone. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone.